Da, da, da. What's up, everyone? Matt from SamRolling.com doing a spontaneous Q&A session. Haven't done a video in a while, doing lots and lots of stuff with the app. And so, apologies if you can hear my clicking as well. Um, and so I thought I would uh, do random questions, you know, random Q&A. Uh, lots of people asking me lots of general stuff uh, all over the place. So. Um, yeah, just thought I would uh, filter in, see who's about, and um, yeah, hopefully uh, just give you my opinion on uh, on how I do things. So you can use the comment, there should be a comment window somewhere. I don't know what the experience is if you're on mobile, um, but you should be able to, yeah, comment somewhere, and hopefully I'll be able to answer those questions. Doing a lot of stuff on uh, the sound rolling app, getting back into that, making that uh, really nice and tidy. There is uh, still lots of updates. Still, unfortunately, always with the app, the iOS version is a lot slower to the Android version. So the Android version, you're going to be seeing like lots and lots of different changes. Um, and I think they still haven't given me the updates that I did last time. Um, hey, Roxy from London. How's it going? Um, they still haven't given me the yeah the the updates that I even started like three days ago. So the the difference is already uh, quite big. Um, doing a few things like improving the interface, um, but again, this is a live Q and A type thing. So you just ans ask your questions to me um, somehow, and I will uh, I will do that and um, and ask away. I'll I'll stay on for a little bit. And then uh, this video can just be as itself, as part of a, a myriad of all my uh, different kind of content uh, if my laptop doesn't overheat and explode. Um, so uh, there was a few questions uh, that I had uh, uh, I think over the weekend. So uh, one of them was, uh, what, what is my situation in terms of like feeding a boom op and then feeding it? like a client um, a feed, aka like the sound that I'm mixing or a certain type of input. Um, the good thing about the uh, 688 or any device where you're allowed to uh, kind of customizably route things is I usually do the boom op gets uh, the auxiliary one, and I just feed either uh, they like to hear. It's usually the pre-fade on the boom track. Um, and sometimes it'll be a mix as well. So sometimes I could feed a, a mix into one side and, um, well, it's only a mono out. So sometimes it's a mix. It all depends on the boom up. Uh, and then I can do X2, uh, which can be just for the client. Um, and that can just be a, a general mix. Um, I can do uh, feeding to cameras. Um, I actually got the, got the opportunity to feed uh, how many cameras did I feed? Five, I think, recently. Um, and so they were all kind of fed out of the same kind of thing. Um, a lot to do with the 10-pin uh, connections, Hiroshi connections, uh, which gives you kind of two uh, two outputs of the of the XLR, as well as some X1s and X2s. Um, so if you're just joining me, there's quite a few people on already, uh, but do uh, ask your questions. There should be some facility around here uh, to Ask those. Um, do you ever have a chance to connect a soundboard uh, live encoding, for instance? Interesting. No, I don't. I don't think I do. And I'm, I'm getting uh, my phone's going off. Um, no, I'm not sure what you mean by live encoding. For instance, do you mean like connect to a soundboard for like a Facebook Live thing? Um, that's probably the closest I've come. Uh, to doing anything like that, I need to look into more of their um, uh, more of their setup. It'd be really interesting because uh, doing quite a lot more of uh, Facebook Live in general, um, which is quite fun. It's again, it's just live, and most of the time it um, it has uh, quite a few problems, but uh, we get there in the end. Cool. Um, live recording, yeah. So that would be like Facebook Live, yeah. So. Um, so yeah, I have done that. I have done that before. Uh, to be honest, again, I've just been focused so much on uh, my end of things of how I'm going to record stuff uh, that they just want a feed off me, and so they just take a, a feed of whatever I'm mixing, um, and that goes into into their kind of thing. Um, there's also a way you can do it where you just feed the cameras and then they mix it in, so you can feed like one or two cameras 
um, and then whoever you're kind of flicking to, they get a different kind of sound. Um, I've also done, uh, did a live thing uh, for Pandora last year as well uh, with, um, yeah, doing the ballet, what's it called? Um, yeah. Uh, Dan, don't have an immediate question, but thanks for all your great videos. That's fine, Dan. Let me know any more that you would like. I'm up to like 300 and something now. Um, and again, it's, it's one of these things where I think generally the industry is quite closed off, and I think that's good for a number of reasons. It's good because then it's hard for people to break in. Stay with me, stay with me. Um, it's hard to people, for people to break in because they're in that good enough knowledge, and so it's hard to be a sound person. Um, and so then theoretically, people that are working with uh, people that are not doing a very good job end up hiring people that are doing a very good job and so paying the proper rates and all that kind of stuff. On the flip side of things, I think with the uh, technology coming down so, so cheap, uh, I think they're in danger of um, potentially just isolating the next generation. So, um, Nicholas Price. Uh, hey Matt, do you have any issues with Tentacle Sync for clients who don't use their software? Uh, what do you do if so? Uh, for me, if there is any, in terms of uh, whatever the client requests, I can obviously do things like time code. If it comes to the point where they want um, audio time code, I make sure that they uh, are understanding that I am just feeding the first, I'm just like pre presenting them with. Um, like the LTC, whatever it's called, um, audio time code. And if they want to use their clips and sync it all up like that way, uh, I can point them in the right direction. Uh, but I don't, um, yeah, I don't, I don't kind of go overboard. Um, just going to reduce my bandwidth just in case it's like slowing down on your guys' end. I don't know. Low, maybe. Um, but yeah. Uh, if if there's any other kind of second party plugin, third party thing, um, I make sure that uh, they understand how that would work. Again, I'm offering them solution. I'm giving them uh, kind of how to do it. Um, if it's yeah, if it if it looks like it's going to be even too tricky for them, I just I don't know. I just suggest an alternate thing. For instance, like just clapping it yourself. If they're just using normal time code, that works fine in like Premiere Pro or something like that, um, and so they're pretty they're pretty used to that. And I think the only reason you would use the Tentacle Sync software is for the for just the audio audio time code, um, and so yeah, that would just be a, a completely separate solution um, for more of a DSLR thing. Uh, but if you the best thing to do is probably just make a couple of videos on doing it. And then that's what you can send out to them. Um, and it shows that you're kind of giving more value. Uh, Jeff Cools, uh, perhaps this is off topic. There are no off topics in the spontaneous live sound Q&A. Um, how difficult was it to develop an app? Um, the It's kind of easy and it's hard. Uh, technically, it seems quite easy. The thing that just absolutely kills me is the kind of debugging and the testing. Um, and that's uh, that's pretty much the only reason why these things take so long because there's kind of still so many different devices. I, for instance, only have an Android, and so I can't test an iPhone that much. Um, and so yeah, there's just it's just the debugging type of things and just getting stuff up. Um, it's stupid. Um, Dan, uh, while we're on the app, the Windows Phone app stopped working. Yes, unfortunately. Uh, I was using a number of uh, third-party integrated things, and Microsoft basically want you to develop it straight off their very own dedicated platform. I basically have a thing where I'm set up to build on Android and iPhone, and originally through like a third-party plugin, uh, be able to convert that to kind of a Windows solution to make that really easy. Uh, but unfortunately, they wouldn't allow that anymore, um, and so that's not possible at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, you could still, I think still most of my resources are just on my normal website. And maybe I'll have a look at hacking my website a little bit together uh, to try and get um, kind of a, a more of a, an app experience, as it were. Um, uh, what else do we have? Whoa, OK. Uh, SD, enjoying your radio mic tip videos when hiding mics 
uh, and you're at the mercy of what they're wearing. You see, uh, the uh, sports coat gives me nightmares. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, yeah, that video was good. And yeah, there's a lot of lot of things to cover with that. Um, again, scratchy shirts, that kind of thing. I try and always um, to have uh, a boom, essentially. <laughs> Even with all these corporate things, like I often like just don't, I flat out just being like, no, I'm not radio micing, there's no point. Um, and often, uh, which is quite nice as well, the actual people that are doing it, uh, they'll usually be like, they'll say like, am I being miked, like casually, whatever. And then you'll go, no, um, we're just going to use the boom, or whatever. And they go, brilliant, great. So I think everyone's generally happy all around. Um, and it does sound a lot better. Again, like three and a half thousand pounds above them, or like 1,600, depending on the microphone. Um, or like 200 pound mic with a two and a half thousand pound receiver on it. Um, so yes, so again, sorry, Dan, you know you're in the minority. Unfortunately, Windows phones are in the minority. If they hadn't have changed uh, their policy on third party like adaptations um, and tried to go for a completely closed system like the other two, um, it's, yeah, it's just unfortunate. But if you've got any tips for how I can make that um, into something else, uh, that would be, um, yeah, that'd be good. Um, so let's see. Uh, you have a, oh, so Ice, so Roxy, you have a live recording of a six man band and only four line in. Any tips at this lower end solution? Um, oh, the lower end, so. Um, firstly, what you can do is you could buy uh, the extra plug-in, I think, the plug-on um, for the XLR, for the um, H6, and so then you could have the full six uh, without doing anything ropey, um, and then that would kind of be the best way, I guess. Uh, the band, depending on what the instruments are, I guess you have one one mic per band. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of my like quick quick analysis of it again. If you only have so many inputs, then you work you work with that. You can work with four. You get them all to sit close together, but you're just going to get a lot of bleeding. So it depends on the um, on what kind of post production situation you're in. Um, uh, Jeff Cools, would you consider adding transcription feature to your app? I don't know how long that will take me to do, but do you mean um, do you mean like while they're sitting there, someone's transcribing, or do you mean like a text to text to type kind of in thing. Again, I learned all my kind of coding stuff as as and when. So again, depending on the on the learning curve of that, it might be possible it may take me uh, a lifetime to actually implement. But if you send me an email or Facebook or I believe you're on my Instagram as well, um, any any which way you like to um, use your social media, um, then send me just more ideas of how you think that would work and uh, we'll try and work something out. Um, Toby, hey Matt, do you uh, audio restoration plugins such as Isotopes make your job easier on set? The catch twenty two of this question is that um, is the uh, easier on set. I mean, for instance, I don't use them on set, so uh, directly for on set, no. But then um, being able to oh, let's see. So directly on set, no. But again, knowing the possibilities of them in post-production, yes. Uh, because uh, again, I do a lot of post-production um, for kind of corporate commercial type stuff, uh, mainly because you can kind of do that at home quite easy, 2.1 setup, that whole thing. Stuff for like Instagram or Facebook. Um, and so knowing the capabilities of plugins or post-production, um, especially if you're the one doing the post-production, by the way, that's another whole whole area to this. Um, then yeah, then it makes then it makes your job a lot easier. It's the text feature, yeah, I'll have to look at that, Jeff. I'll have to figure that out. I think I could do. I could definitely do recording, but then yeah, trying to get it accurate. I think that's the only problem. That's maybe the only problem with it because it would probably have to go into again a third party without me like trying to uh, build my own transcription software, uh, which would be a bit impossible. Um, then yeah, you're probably better off just uh, yeah. If, maybe I could hack something with a uh, Google Voice or something. Um, I'll I'll look into it. Uh, but I'm still trying to fill everything up at the moment with the rest of the app. But yeah, trying to crack on with it. 
Um, SD Audio for indoor booming. What mic do you prefer? Well, I only obviously have a, a limited selection of mics, and uh, mine is the Shops, Shops uh, MK41 uh, for interior generally, if I can get quite close. Uh, if it's quite big and reverberant, uh, maybe the Super CMIT, just because of that, uh, that preset on the channel, actually does curve some of the, uh, the reverb. Again, this is if I like if they do a, a stupid wide shot and I can't uh, kind of get enough sound blankets around or, or that kind of thing. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm left with there. Um, I know the latest version of XMR and facilities is cross platform. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll look into that. I'll save that, uh, Dan. This is just to, towards the app for um, Windows. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if they let you. But it was literally from the um, Windows itself saying about third-party delivery. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if this uh, this could work. Hopefully, um, let me get back and and see what other questions there are. Um, uh, Dan, have you worked in a scenario where you need to be coordinate frequencies? Frequency is coordinated by a third party. Doing a shoot for the Air Force uh, on an Air Force base soon, I'm guessing they'll need to get permission for what they can use. Yeah, essentially, in that kind of scenario, uh, because you're kind of the, the day player, what they'll probably do is you say how many things you need, and they'll probably tell you no, or this is what you have. Much like if you turn up to a theater and they're already doing rehearsals, um, they'll, they'll usually have whatever they're using already. And then you can just hopefully, if you have the right block, uh, slot into any of those. Again, in the UK, you're very limited with block 606. Um, so you're not going to have uh, a million choices. Uh, but maybe if you've got WYSICOM or something like that, you can maybe watch something together. Uh, but again, if you're in a place where it's looking like uh, radio is going to be a bit unreliable, I do always try and, try and get the boom in and, uh, and see how that goes. Um, so yeah, so I don't know if anyone has any other questions, but if people are just watching, uh, you can of course share this video, and I may as well hang on for like another ten minutes. Uh, so we're bang on the hour, just like the news, and um, and yeah, then that can that can hopefully work. You can of course li click the like button again. I may as well do my my whole usual usual spiel. And if you haven't already, I assume you're only here because you're subscribed. Um, but yeah, you can subscribe as well. <laughs> this crazy adventure will uh, lead me to. But it's a lot of fun so far. Trying to get a lot of uh, manufacturers on board to do lots of interesting stuff, doing stuff for the app. Just started um, a kind of dedicated uh, post studio as well with someone, trying to partner, make it all proper. Uh, so no more kind of like bedroom antics, even though you can do quite a lot with just a, a computer, a few plugins, and uh, sitting in your pants. Um, yeah, you kind of need the professional look for things like voiceover, ADR, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, and then uh, yeah, everything's just um, taking off on the old Instagram as well, which is nice. And you guys can follow me at. Uh, keep your questions coming, though. If I haven't uh, completely uh, crashed out and I'm just talking to myself, not sure if that that could be the case. Uh, but uh, if if not, then um, yeah, please do get in touch with uh, any more questions. Uh, do I ever use an interference shotgun indoors? Uh, only in rare circumstances where it is crazy noisy. Essentially, the downs of, for instance, why you would use a hypercardioid over a shotgun is because of that interference tube, right? And the interference tube is essentially cancelling out and making it not more sensitive, but it's just making everything else less sensitive, uh, as opposed to the other way around. It's not really reaching anywhere. It's just deflecting off anywhere else. Um, and so there's an interesting thing that happens when you're then using a shotgun inside, because you're in a room, and essentially all the sound bounces off all the walls and eventually back into the microphone anyway, then uh, you can get some weird kind of sound uh, to the quality of it, again, varying massively depending on 
the room and the space. For instance, if you're in an anioic chamber and you have a shotgun, it really doesn't matter because all the sound never bounces back into the microphone. The microphone you want, really. Um, although you have to be quiet on the other end if you're recording someone. Um, as a um, slightly uh, cumbersome analogy. Um, whereas when you use a hypercardioid, it's more of a natural thing because what's happening is uh, the frequency response is usually like pretty equal uh, on a hypercardioid. And so when you get all those reflections coming back in, they're usually just reduced in volume. They're not reduced in kind of differing frequencies. Because uh, again, shotgun polar patterns, um, they, they won't all be uh, coming off at the same time. Like the high frequencies might be like this. Uh, the low frequencies might be like this, and so you you get a weird kind of flavor to the to the sound. So lots of people recommend that you use, um, yeah, other indoor mics. Um, yeah, MKH50 is great actually, and I had the chance to try both of them side by side. Again, the only reason I got my MK41 one because I knew it was a brilliant mic. Although if I had the chance of getting the MKH50, I would have got that as well. Just this one happens to come up as a great deal. Instead of being 1600 I got it for like 800 euros, um, which is a really, really good price. So I just got that. And then I got my uh, Super CMIT later on, just because I stayed on brand, just like many people um, get the 60 and the 50 and the 40 and the 70. Uh, but yeah, they're both brilliant. And they're both brilliant because the hypercardioids. Um, uh, listening to the slight nuances of them, yeah, I'm going to try and try and work in some uh, stuff like that. Um, so would a Sankin CS3 with virtually no rear lobe have the same problem? Y yes, because of the front. Because of the front of the, it's not the back of the lobe. Because again, you can't treat the, you, you don't treat the polar pattern as just this kind of 2D uh, thing that whatever you point at, it's cutting everything else out. It's actually a big dome. Um, and so it's actually equally unaffecting like, let me quickly, like, Google the, um, so, Sankin's CS uh, 3E. Ah, people, that is, like, the number one, like, Google suggested thing. Sankin's CS 3 indoors. So, uh, answering quite a popular question, I guess. Uh, polar pattern. So, we Google that, and we see that. I think this is the one. It's loading up. Do, do, do. Oh, that's the SR2. Uh, do they have the SC3? There we go. Right. So, what do I need to do to be able to share my screen? Because then this is going to be the most useful for you guys. Uh, screen share. Application window for this. Share. OK, here we go. So, I've just Googled the image. And um, so what you're going to be able to see is right here. So you see how um, at all these different levels up here, so we've got 2 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, 500 hertz, 500, 250, 416, whatever. But look, they come in at a really different length, right? So you've got the low frequencies all on this side, all quite even and smooth and nice. And then you have all the slightly higher frequencies coming in at a different, different length. Um, you can see that the 4 is still quite smooth, but you're actually going to lose more bass. Um, and so indoors, I mean, I can't directly say what will exactly happen, because again, it depends um, on, the, on the whole indoor thing. But let's do MKH50 polar pattern. And you can see that the actual difference between them all, again, this goes up to 16 uh, kilohertz. It's much more smoother. So even though it's got this, this rear thing, it's not that you're not going to hear it. It's because it's going to be bouncing around the room. And eventually, in, because it's traveling at 350 meters a second, uh, in a split of a second, it will uh, come and uh, yeah, smack you in the face. So um, yeah, that is a really good example of um, yeah, just uh, why using uh, shotguns inside aren't necessarily like the worst thing in the world, but they um, they will give you kind of funny results, let's say, on your scenario, the room, again, like exclamation, like asterisks, whatever, and all this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Greg, and hopefully that all came up and works fine. I don't know. Um, 
So let's see. To, to do so, you mentioned sound blankets. How much do you prep a room for a shoot, interview, narrative, etc.? Uh, do you lug those around or rely on a grip trunk for those? Uh, usually depends. Uh, I have to say, for drama stuff, it's uh, if you've scouted out the room. Um, I do quite like uh, to kind of feel feel the space a little bit. Uh, I have to admit, but uh, that's just personal preference on my front. Again. It's usually if it's just really bad. Sound blankets are actually more useful uh, for things like footsteps, uh, things like, yeah, depends how, how, how much to town you can go and how much you can afford to, um, yeah, just uh, yeah, make time for it and uh, fit it in the budget and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't personally own any, so again, I would yeah, try and get them all off a grip truck or the people to rent them and suggest uh, this, that, and the other. Yeah, and they gave me a budget, then I would get some. I'll probably buy sub instead of uh, doing anything else. Um, ST Audio, uh, Noel, Matt. Uh, I usually use my shop's MK41 indoors and 416 outside. Did the uh, did use the MKH50 on a shoot once, and it did sound nice. Yes, when I tried them, literally side by side with the same person talking, uh, they sound they sounded really really nice. Come on, uh, uh, using real sound blankets or moving blankets. Uh, these are moving blankets that I usually am able to rent quite easily. Uh, proper sound blankets, again, uh, not sure on the full difference of them, uh, but yeah, it's just something that I would rent uh, rather than own at the moment. Uh, but I need uh, bigger transportation to uh, carry around all my stuff. So that is why. So, if any of you are just joining us, there's still quite a few people here, which is quite good. Um, then, uh, of course, you can uh, get your questions in somewhere via this uh, magical thing called the internet. Um, and my spontaneous live sound Q&A with me just sharing my opinions on what I do, hopefully hearing a few pin-ins on what you guys do. And uh, we can all get a bit more informed, or at least a bit more context. That is the thing that is generally missing. Um, because we have a lot of content these days, aka everyone can read the manual, all that kind of stuff. It then comes into play like, what do I do if, when, why, how, all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this is why this is interesting to you guys as well. And thank you all for uh, subscribing and uh, helping support uh, what I just personally like to do anyway. I'm just ha glad. It's a happy accident that, uh, that someone else uses something. Um, so Gabe. For indoor wind protection slash room reduction of the MKH50 slash hypercardioid, what would you re recommend as I only have a foam mic cover that it came with? Well, I was fortunate, of, uh, and fortunate enough to uh, test the uh, Rykop baseball. I thought that was pretty good. Um, I also do own the one, the, sh the manufacturer own um, stock build. Uh, w S W S D uh, for oh, excuse me um, as well, but it's a bit bigger. Um, so yeah, try out the baseball. Uh, try out, and that's good for inside. Again, if you're if you're outdoors, again you're, you're talking about indoor wind protection. So that should be perfectly fine. Uh, look it up. It's called the baseball. Um, Sinella Leo. Oh, that's what we use for indoors. Yeah, and you can also get, I guess, the right coat, uh, like gag ball as well. Uh, Sinella, I keep meaning to get in touch with Sinella. I've, I keep trying to have conversations with them uh, to get them to uh, tell me more about their stuff because I personally have no hand-on experience from it apart from, uh, I guess, the same reason why I wasn't really that much of a fan of the Cyclone, even though it's probably amazing. It's just because it doesn't really fit in my, in my gear. I fit everything into a Peli case, um, and so having a nice... Just a normal tube is much better for me than uh, than yeah the extra extra space. But again, maybe sonically it's a lot better, a lot better at handling wind noise. Although I do need to update my fur. My fur is like seven years old now, so yeah, get some new stuff. Uh, it's not not doing too well through the uh, your washing machine. Um, do you ever use the auto mix function on your sound devices? You've used it once. Clients wanted mono mix for people thought it worked well. Yeah. Exactly. So I've used the yeah, I've used the Dugan. I used the Mix Assist slightly. I've used it for things like podcast. I've used it for um, uh, 
I think it's it's one of these things where it's again more useful. Um, I don't know. It, it, yeah, it did kind of work. I am kind of mixing on hand as well, so it is kind of helping me more. Because uh, again, if someone like taps, it's still going to mix that in. Um, so the mix assist function is useful to a point. Uh, what I would suggest as a as an interesting slant on it, which has been quite successful for me, is that if you if you want to mix a boom and some radios together, um, is that you can have the radios like turned m maybe like twenty five percent up or round, um, just to give the dialogue a bit more punch in it. But use the boom as your main thing, and that way people kind of have a bit more kind of grr in the in the scene. It's quite useful. Uh, what do you use? Uh, what do you use an MKH fifty outside uh, for a really echoey location instead of a shotgun? A really echoey location outside is has to be I don't know like a, an epic mountain range or I don't know a cave. But again, it, it still actually defaults back to the indoors. Um, and again, you can only do so much. Um, the the MKH fifty is not going to help. Uh, sort of. It doesn't really reduce echo. It's just it's more that it's just going to taint the sound that comes back in the form of the echo. Um, so before when I was explaining that it's in the room and it bounces all the way back. Stadium, a stadium is fine to use a shotgun. I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd use a shotgun as soon as I was outside. Um, in fact, I've used both. I don't know if you can get close enough as well. If it's a shot like uh, mine right now. Then you're you're perfectly fine to use um, a hypercardioid right here because a it'll be sensitive um, and so you'll have to put a bit more gain on it and so that'll bring the rest of the volume outside down I think generally um, but then with a the shotgun you don't have to turn it add as much gain or at least on mine personally um, but it's more directional so I don't know six and six and two threes. But if you can get close enough, then uh, use use a proper one. Uh, but if it's super echoey, then um, then yeah, maybe you want to use a shotgun and try and try and get rid of that. Um, I think people most people would default to a shotgun outdoors. Um, but if it just so happens that you're yeah indoors and then you have to rush outdoors, then you can just keep your indoor mic on and it'll be fine. Um, uh, so no. I've used MK50 outside with the appropriate wind protection, uh, with the Rykop Blimp or the Snell Leo with the fur. Uh, fur, amazing! You've used all of them. I think they're all great. I mean, for for outdoors, you definitely need some form of blimp, and uh, yeah, and and fur, for lack of a better word. Uh, hey, Frank, the binaural microphone. Oh, getting at or the. Frank, you need to finish your question. It's going quite well. It's very, very busy. But uh, how's it going, McGee? And uh, if anyone else has questions, I'll still hang around for another 10 minutes, probably, since we seem to be doing quite well. And then this can just be an absolutely epic video that uh, three, three other people will watch after this. <laughs> so yeah. No, we won't make it too much longer. Uh, although respects for like everyone hanging in there, or at least like as soon as someone leaves, someone else enters. We're, we're staying pretty stable with the numbers as well. Um, ah, mix pre, mix pre six, uh, C U Y T and pay. Oh, cut and paste doesn't work. Oh yeah, thinking about <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the mix pre six looks uh, really really good. Again, for sound designers, I thought it was really interesting. Um, a lot of when the stuff for NAB kind of came out, a lot of people trying to cram it into obviously exactly what we do. I think everyone looks at an, an audio product, especially, and whatever comes out, then people are trying to trying to fit it into how they would best use it. Uh, don't think it. I mean, you can use it in a in a bag for the type of work I do, but I wouldn't bother. I think what's really interesting is for sound design work is that you don't need that many uh, mixes out. Um, and yeah, super quiet preamps is always good. Uh, those amazing limiters is always really good. Um, and so that's that's the main thing. And if you're a sound designer, you've already spent quite a bit on microphones. I think. Oh, good. It's not even that late. 
need to eat something, I think. Um, so yeah, and the three. I would personally go for the six over the three, generally. Um, but again, expense, 1,500-ish, I think they're at. Um, so a lot of people think, oh, lower, lower in market, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Greg Palmer, for post noise reduction. What do you use and what is your process? Um, light and often and RX5. No, RX6 I've got. RX5 I've got at the moment. I need to get six. Uh, I need to get paid first and I'll get six. Um, and yeah, it's a case of dialogue denoising potentially a little bit. Depends what the problem is. It comes with a suite of different products. Uh, I like using the spectral analyzer tool as well, just being able to slice out individual things, clicks, pops, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, generally all of this stuff is really good. Really interested to uh, obviously try RX6 as well, and uh, with all their kind of de rustling wind kind of things as well. Um, and I should note that it, it, you can remove anything, but it's much like color grading. And if the color happens to be a primary one, uh, like uh, I don't know, blue. Then, um, then it's going to just destroy your whole picture because you're going to take blue out. So yeah. Um, say we are filming, and then we perhaps want to make uh, some amateur shots in between without the camera rolling. Uh, what time code to use? You're using uh, an SD633. If it's Atmos, it doesn't really matter about time code. I would just keep it the same time code. Uh, but just slate it differently. So you slate your things as wild or Atmos 1, 2, whatever. Um, well, that's personally what I do. It doesn't The time code mode? Uh, which time code mode were you in for filming? That's the question. Um, because if you're in a record run, then that's not going to be very useful. Uh, but if you're... Uh, um, yeah, so if you're in record run, but I always use 24 hour time of day uh, for mine on free run. So whatever time I actually record something is the time that is time code. Um, so yeah. So I think that is the end. Busby, you had the last say. That's pretty good. Um, I will be doing uh, probably another one of these spontaneous ones later in the week. So if you're uh, subscribed, uh, click this little bell thing. There's a little sign next to the subscribe button, which means you actually get all these live notifications, which is, I'm sure, actually how many of you found out that this was, this was going. Ooh, what about time rolling over in midnight? OK, Greg, final, final say. If it moves over midnight, what you do is you keep it in the same day folder. That's what I do, anyway, uh, because you shoot in, in solid days. And so whenever your day kind of starts, uh, you don't necessarily have to call it whatever day it is. You can call it a filming day. You can rename it in the folder. Uh, oh, Busby in Iceland. Nice. I need to get over to Iceland soon. Um, yeah, you keep it in the same folder. So what you do is you have a higher thing. So there's three levels on the sound devices anyway, again, depending on your recorder. But I would do the top one as whatever the project is. And then I would do the second one as uh, day one, day two, whatever, uh, filming days. And then uh, I wouldn't do three. Some people do three. Some people do scenes. Uh, but personally, when I'm in post-production, then I just take all of those things out because I don't really care about the scene. It's already written in the actual title of the WAV file. So yeah, post-sync with timecode. Yes, it does. But that's why you only do batches of syncing, and you sync them by days. You don't pull the whole film in and then try and sync it, because if you're doing a 24-hour run, then everything that happened at exactly 8 o'clock will be synced together and synced wrong anyway. So they have to do it in batches, because even when it's midnight, there's only one zero 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 one. Um, so that's that's more for them. It doesn't create that much havoc, but as long as you know that you're shooting overnight, then or if it's even only one day, then it doesn't even matter. Um, yeah, so that's how I get around that. So guys, you can uh, obviously keep all your questions and all that good stuff coming into me generally through the social media sphere of uh, the internet. Uh, Instagram is probably my main home right now, although I'm obviously on Facebook, that kind of thing. You can almost email me, download the app. Hopefully, it's kind of working. Still got a few teething things to 
uh, egg out, tried to make the um, kind of adverts not kind of all over the place. So taking out the banner ad, just going to be the occasional, hopefully the occasional if I've got the coding right, um, occasional full screen ad instead. So hopefully that should be shouldn't interrupt your experience too much and uh, can still help me slightly pay for it. Because um, that's the dream, breaking even. Yes. OK, guys. So until next time.